In this section entitled Anti-Malarials and Anti-Parasitics, we'll be talking about these medications and when they should be given. In this section, we'll be covering anti-malarial medication and anti-parasitic medication. Treatment differs for malaria patients based on whether you're prophylaxing them or treating them. For a patient who is about to go into a malaria-rich region, the medications commonly given are chloroquine and mefloquine. Other medications are commonly used as well for more uh, uh, varying parts of the world that have certain types of malaria. Other medications that are commonly given for treatment include primaquine. Here you see some micrographs of blood smears of the peripheral blood showing the malarium parasites. You can see the plasmodium organisms inside the red blood cells as well as the white blood cells. Be able to recognize this on the USMLE step one. The most commonly given medication for both treatment and prophylaxis of malaria, malaria is called chloroquine. It's derived from quinine, and it's related to quinidine, which is an antiarrhythmic. It's one of the best and most versatile antimalarial medications that we have. The mechanism of action is that it inhibits dihydrofolate reductase of the organism. It's also able to disrupt the pH of the digestive vacuole and prevents the parasite from digesting hemoglobin from our red cells. Remember that it kills the active erythrocytic phase of all four species, but not the phase that resides in the human liver. Chloroquine is becoming more and more of a problem to give certain populations because plasmodium falciparum has been shown to be very resistant to this medication recently. Some adverse effects of chloroquine that are classic include visual disturbances. This is something that you should know for the test. Uh, chloroquine is known to cause a retinopathy. And any medication that's related to chlor chloroquine may also uh, cause hemolytic anemia in patients that have G6PD deficiency. Primaquine is a medication that's related to chlor chloroquine. It does kill the liver phase in contrast to chloroquine. It does have the same method of action as well. It is pr effective in preventing infection as well. Mefloquine is used in areas of the world where chloroquine resistance is prominent. It's active against plasmodium falciferum and plasmodium vivax. It has the same side effects as chloroquine. However, it is classically known to cause neuropsychiatric reactions. You should remember mefloquine's uh, common side effects may include hallucinations and psychosis as well as neuropathies and seizures. Tetracycline and doxycycline can also be used for acute malaria attacks or for chemoprophylaxis in patients that may be allergic to other medications. Atovaquone slash proguanol is a medication that works by inhibiting mitochondrial <coughs> electron transport in the organism. This is also used for chloroquine resistant malaria. It's also active against pneumocystis gerevisiae in uh, immunocompromised patients. This medication, uh, as a side effect, may cause LFT elevations and may cause flu-like symptoms as well. Let's talk for a minute about some other parasitic infections that are common not only in the United States but also around the world. One of the most important medications that we'll be talking about right now is metronidazole. Metronidazole is an antibiotic that is effective for many different organisms. It's especially effective for amoebiasis, something that we see in amoebic dysentery. The bug for this, for this is Entamoeba histolytica. It's also active against Giardia organisms, which can cause giardiasis. This is a uh, diarrhea symptom, syndrome that's very common, actually, in the United States. Uh, tr and it's also active against trichomoniasis. Remember the, con the adverse effects that we can see with metronidazole include unpleasant taste, and it does cause a disulfiram-like reaction when patients that are taking it also drink alcohol. This is a micrograph showing that Giardia organism, Giardia lamblia, remember that this organism classically sort of has two spherical shapes in its body, and it has a darker area here in the center. You should be able to recognize this on the test. Trichomoniasis appears differently uh, this is from a pap smear uh, sample, and it does show these organisms. You can kind of see the flagellum here coming off of the organism, and it has a sort of a darker area surrounded by a lighter halo. 
Let's talk about Entamoeba histolytica first. I mean, this is the bug that's involved in amoebic dysentery. Uh, patients will develop this illness if they were to drink water that contains the cyst of the entamoeba bug. Uh, the trophozoites that are ingested will travel to the colon in the human and may invade the epithelium. They can also travel to the liver or lungs and form abscesses that resembles anchovy sauce. It's kind of a classic appearance of those abscesses. This, uh, this illness can be diagnosed from cysts or trophozoites that are located in the stool. The treatment for this infection is metronidazole, classically. There are other medications, but the one that you really need to know is metronidazole or, flag or flagell. Sorry. Toxoplasmosis is another infection uh, that's uh, pretty common actually around the world, less common than the United States. It's especially prevalent in patients that have an immunocompromised state and have a low CD4 count. It's very important that this infection is prevented in pregnant women because this, this is one of the torches organisms. T is for toxoplasmosis. All of the torches organisms are able to pass the placenta and go from the mother to the fetus. Uh, usually uh, when a patient's CD4 count drops below 100 cells, we will start prophylaxing that patient against toxo. The bug is called Toxoplasma gondii. There are many different uh, forms of the bug. The, most, the two most important are the tachyzoites and the bradyzoites. The tachyzoites are rapidly growing. These are present during acute infection and they can destroy tissues. The bradyzoites are slower growing and they are in cysted bugs. They form cysts in the muscle, brain, and the eye. The tissue cysts that rupture can cause inflammation with necrosis. The treatment for toxoplasma is paramethamine and sulfadiazine. Paramethamine and sulfa medications work synergistically against folic acid synthesis, similarly to the way Bactrim works, sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. Let's talk briefly about African sleeping sickness, a disease caused by the uh, organism Trypanosoma brucei. Even though we don't see this very often in the United States, it's very important for medicine around the world to be able to recognize this. You should also remember this for the USMLE step one, as you probably will be tested on it at some point. The transmission of this uh, illness occurs through the tsetse fly, as you can see here. Uh, the fly bite uh, will sometimes lead to a chancre-like uh, lesion on the skin, and the bug is able to re replicate in both the blood and lymph fluid. The bug is then able to invade the CNS during later portions of the infection and can cause inflammation, lethargy, and death. The diagnosis of this illness is based on serology and biopsy of the skin lesion as well as the central nervous system fluid, the CSF. The visualization of the organisms is very important. Uh, the treatment of this uh, illness is, is through uh, ceramine and pentamidine. We'll talk more about the method of action of those medications later. Malarsoprol is uh, used in the later stages of the infection. Ceramine is a polyanionic compound that's used uh, to treat trypanosoma. Um, it's not quite clear how the medication works, but it's thought to disrupt the membrane of the organism. Uh, this medication can also be used for onchocerciasis. Malarsoprol is an arsenical organic compound that inhibits sulfhydryl groups specifically in these organisms. It is able to cross into the central nervous system through the blood-brain barrier and is effective for advanced disease. The organism that causes the sleeping sickness is seen right here. It's sort of worm-like. This is the trypomastigote. And you can see more of these organisms here in the peripheral blood. You should be able to recognize this for the USMLE. Let's talk about trip trypanosoma crucii, which causes Chagas disease. The transmission of Chagas disease is through the reduvid bug, buggy, which you can see here in the bottom right. The feces of the bug contain the organism, and it's uh, transmitted to the human through uh, fecal oral contact. Uh, when the bug is ingested, uh, the trypanosoma can be uh, passed into the cardiac myocytes through the bloodstream and go into the nervous plexus of the esophagus and the colon and other parts of the GI tract. Therefore, this disease is able to cause a dilated cardiomyopathy as well as disruption of the intestinal paralysis by invading into the nerve plexus. It's very important to diagnose this early. The treatment for this 
illness is nifertamox. Nifertamox is a derivative of nitrofurazone or nitrofurantoin. Uh, the way that it works is it inhibits trypanothione reductase, which is an enzyme that's located inside the trypanosome. This medication can have very severe side effects, such as GI irritation and central nervous system effects. You should definitely remember that this is the treatment for Chagas disease for the USMLE Step 1. Some important anti-helminthic medications or medications that are used to fight worm infections are listed here on this page. Albendazole is the classic medication that's used to treat worm infections. It has a wide spectrum of activity. The way that it works is by blocking glucose uptake and blocking microtubule function in the worm. The side effects can be alopecia and increased LFTs, but generally this is well tolerated. Mabendazole is another medication that's very similar to albendazole. Um, Mabendazole does not enter the blood very freely, so therefore it causes fewer side effects because it's not taken up very strongly from the GI tract. It works very well against localized helminthic infections of the GI tract, however. Thiabendazole is taken up very strongly from the GI system into the bloodstream, therefore it causes more side effects, but it works well against disseminated helminthic infections. Pyrenzol pamoate is actually available over the counter and this medication is able to cause a depolarizing paralysis in certain nematodes. It does have minor side effects and it is the drug of choice for hookworms and roundworms in general. Other medications that are important for helminthic infections include piperazine, which is a GABA agonist. It can cause paralysis in the helminth. It does have GI side effects in the human. Ivermectin, which is also a GABA agonist and can cause paralysis. Ivermectin is very commonly given to to dogs to prevent heartworm infections. Praziquantel, which is another very important anti-helminthic, is thought to increase the permeability of the helminth, uh, I'm sorry, uh, permeability of schistosomes uh, for calcium ions. And it's used for trematode infections, not nematodes. Uh, diethylcarbamazine is another medication that we'll be talking about. We're not sure how it works, but it is classically causing a Mazzotti reaction, which we'll talk about. The Mazzotti reaction <clears throat> is a common side effect of a lot of these antiparasitic medications. And what this describes is a constellation of symptoms, not just one, that range in severity depending upon the parasite burden or how many parasites are present in the host when the host is treated for the infection. The Mazzotti reaction is basically fever and chills which can progress to lymphangiitis, then respiratory distress and hypotension, almost a shock-like state. And the reason this occurs is when the patient is treated with the medication, it causes lysis of the organisms that are infecting the person. And lysis of the parasites will release the contents of the parasite into the host all at once and can cause a sepsis-like syndrome. Let's talk briefly about cestodes. Cestodes, uh, also known in the human as the disease spectrum of echinococcosis, uh, are generally caused by tapeworms. Echinococcus granulosus is another name for the dog tapeworm. And this tapeworm is able to cause hydatid cysts in the liver and the lung and the brain. This is a classic USMLE question, uh, that of the hydatid cyst in the liver. It's very important when you have a patient that has hydatid cysts in the liver that these cysts are not ruptured. Usually surgery is required to remove the cysts before they rupture. If those cysts were to rupture, the contents of the cyst can cause anaphylactic shock. In general, the eggs of the cestode are uh, transmitted by fecal oral contact to the human. The treatment for cestode infections, including hydatocyst, is albendazole. We can also treat the cysts directly by injection of ethanol. However, it's very important that the cysts are not ruptured. This is a very commonly tested uh, question on the USMLE step one. Other cestode infections include teneiasis, which involve tinea solium and tinea saginatum, which are the pork and beef tapeworms. Tapeworm infections are less common in the United States than around the world. These are, again, fecal oral contact, and they can cause diarrhea, abdominal discomfort, and malnutrition. They're diagnosed from stool studies. The treatment for this disease spectrum is praziquantel or neclosamide. 
Cystocercosis is a complication of the teneosolium tapeworm infecting the brain. It can cause seizures. The treatment for this illness is praziquantel and albendazole or surgery. Pinworm infections are very common in the United States. The organism causing this is Enterobius vermicularis. Uh, it causes pruritus around the anal sphincter, and it, the transmission, again, is through fecal-oral contact. When a patient ingests pinworm eggs, they hatch in the intestines. And uh, the female tapeworm is able to migrate to the anal area and deposit eggs there. That is what causes the itching. The diagnosis is classically through the scotch tape test. You should do that for the test. The scotch tape is placed around the anus and removed, and, di and the diagnosis is made under the microscope to look for the eggs. These worms appear very small and white. The treatment for this infection is either mebendazole or pyrantel pamoate. Escariasis is a very serious disease that's uh, more common in uh, third world countries than in the United States. However, it's important to understand this for the USMLE, also for uh, international medicine. Ascaris lumbricoides is the organism causing this. Approximately one third of the entire world is infected with these organisms at some point in their life. The transmission of this disease is again fecal oral. Humans are the only host known for ascariasis. The intestinal larva is able to migrate through the bloodstream from the intestine to the lung. And as the uh, intestinal larva enters the lung, it can cause both intestinal obstruction as well as eosinophilic pneumonitis. The treatment for this disease is mebendazole and pyrantel pamoate. And as you can see, these worms are rather large. These are endoscopic views into the gut, and you can see how large these worms are. They can um, take up a lot of space inside the uh, gut, and they are actually very long and thick. We'll briefly talk about whip whipworm disease, disease or uh, trichuriasis. Trichuris trichuria is the worm that's responsible for this. This disease can cause abdominal symptoms, pain, and diarrhea. Again, this is through fecal oral contact. The diagnosis is uh, through the characteristic eggs in the stool. They're barrel shaped eggs. And the treatment is mebendazole. This is less commonly seen than pinworm disease. Hookworm disease uh, is known as old world or new world hookworm disease. The old world bug is called Ankylocytoma duodenale. And the new world hookworm disease is called. Nicator americanus. The way that these worms infect the host is they attach to the mucosa, again, uh, and cause anorexia, ulcer, and iron deficiency due to intestinal blood loss. These are transmitted uh, directly into the skin by larvae found in the soil. The larvae then travel into the lungs through the bloodstream and then are coughed up and swallowed, and the uh, worms then mature in the gut and produce eggs in the gut, and then are deposited into the soil through the stool. The treatment is, again, mebendazole and pyrantel pamoate. Trichinosis is another uh, commonly tested uh, parasitic disease involving the um, nematode uh, Trichinella spiralis. This is an intestinal nematode that causes cysts in both humans and pigs. Uh, the transmission of this disease is through uh, undercooked pork. And the way that it's diagnosed is through abdominal pain, diarrhea, myalgias, and eosinophilia, and muscle biopsy is generally needed to make the final diagnosis. The treatment uh, for this disease uh, is thiabendazole, because thiabendazole is able to penetrate deep into the muscle. It, menbendazole can also be used if it's an early stage disease. There's no treatment for late stages, as this disease can be fatal. Filiariasis or uh, elephantiasis uh, are results of filial worms that are blocking the flow of lymph through, uh, through the body. Um, the, ma the main organisms that are responsible for causing this are Rucheria bancrofti and Brugia malii. This is less commonly seen in the United States than in third world countries. The transmission is through mosquito vector. Uh, the diagnosis can be a nocturnal blood smear for microfiliary and a PCR antigen detection. detection. The treatment for these infections is diethylcarbamazine or ivermectin. Visceral larval migrans is a 
infection that is caused by the dog roundworm, also known as Toxicara canis. In this disease, young children are able to ingest the larva uh, through fecal oral contact, which matures in the intestine, then they can migrate from the liver to the brain and the eyes. So it causes central nervous system deficits. Diethylcarbamazine or albendazole are used to treat this. Onchocerciasis, also known as river blindness, is transmitted by the black fly. It's commonly seen in third world countries. These bugs are able to form uh, skin and subcutaneous nodules. They're called onchocerca. The adult worms live in the subcutaneous tissues, whereas the filial, filial worm, worms are able to migrate into the cornea, causing ocular damage. The treatment is ivermectin. This is a classically tested boards question. Uh, in adults, we can also use ceramine. Leishmaniasis is a very important disease to understand because it's very prominent, especially in third world, third world countries. It's transmitted by the sand fly. It causes cutaneous leishmaniasis as well as visceral leishmaniasis, also known as Kala Azar. This can, this can cause massive hepanospital megaly, again, and can be fatal. The bug is Leishmania don donovani, and the diagnosis is through biopsy of the lesions. The treatment is actually stibogluconate, which contains an antimony mo moiety. You can see the organisms here in the, in the uh, bone marrow of this patient. This patient is immunocompromised because of their AIDS status. Schistosomiasis is very important to understand. These are blood fluke infections. These are the organisms that are responsible for causing dermatitis as well as the Katayama fever associated with the infection. Your drug of choice is praziquantel. In schistosomiasis, because the parasite burden is so high, it's very common for the patient to get a Mazzotti reaction during treatment. For treatment of skin lice, it's very important to understand that the medication given should be ovicidal, meaning it should kill the egg of skin lice. The drug of choice generally is considered to be permethrin because it is ovicidal and it has a low skin irritation index. Other medications that are ovicidal and may work very well but can has, have more side effects are lindane and malathion cream. Here are some lists of blood and tissue protozoa that are important to understand for the USMLE test. Most of these we've already talked about. This concludes our section on antimalarials and antiparasitics. In the next section, we'll be going over some vignettes that have to do with antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and antiparasitic medications.